that you want. If you could have one thing, all I want is, come on, I want to hear some. All I want is, what? Flat screen. All I want is a TV. Two front teeth. All I want is iPad. Don't you already have an iPad? You need another. Gilbert, what did you say? A debt gone. <laughs> Didn't they have like someone in the Bible every seven years, right? I mean, we, we need to get back into that kind of stuff. You know, every seven years, you're just debt free. Then we could spend all the money we want on the flat screens, and then it's just forgiven. I, I, love, I love that idea. We all want, we all want something. There, there's something uh, that we desire, and there is something about the Christmas season that even kind of perks that that phrase up more and more, right? I mean, we, we, if you have kids uh, or, or if you have a roommate or if you, you have a close friend, right, you, you want to purchase them something, you want to buy them something, so what do you ask? What do you want? What do you want? It, it just kind of naturally leads us to think, well, all I want is, and isn't that interesting the word we use? Well, all I want is, the, 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 kind of that phrase all, it's just kind of like, if you just give me this one thing, right? If you, just give and yet, if you look at what you want, it's more than just one, right? I mean, I remember when I was a kid, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know why, but like the J.C. Penny catalog. You guys remember this thing? The thing was like filled, like thousand pages. It was crazy. I mean, you would never see that like today. And I remember flipping through the J.C. Penny catalog, circling gift after gift after gift, and then the problem with the J.C. Penny catalog is you would get lost because there was like 1,000 pages. So mom could never see what, you know, what do I want? And it just got lost in the midst of everything. But we all want something. As, as we get a little bit older, as we mature a little bit, uh, our desires do go a little bit deeper usually than, than materialistic, right? It, it does go to, you know, freedom from debt. Uh, it, 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 goes, it goes to a, a relationship that, that can be rebuilt. Uh, if, if it goes to, you know, man, that, that, that temptation, that struggle, that addiction that I have, if I could just, all I want, God, is to get past that. All I want is that, is that sin never to, to lift its ugly head up again. I mean, as we get older, our, our wants uh, have, have a tendency, for most of us anyway, to, to change a little bit, but there's still this this desire to, to want, uh, to want something. Um, and uh, even at, during the Christmas season, um, for most of us, especially if, if you walk into a church at some point, you do begin to go, you know what, what, what do I want from God? What is this whole Jesus thing? You know, maybe you're here this morning and the first time you've ever walked into church and you're like, man, is Jesus for real? Uh, is this whole thing that, that kind of Christmas is about is did he really come and, and live a life? And, and you're like, I just want to know. I want to know. And, uh, and, and for some of us, uh, maybe you're, you're a follower of Jesus and, and, uh, and you're frustrated with God. I mean, life just has not turned out the way that you had thought. And, and you just go, man, all, all I want is, you know, this. God, if you could just get me this. And... Um, what God has, has just laid on my heart for, for us as a church and he's done in my, my own life for, the, for this Christmas is my heart and, and prayer for this series is that, is that we're, gonna, we're all going to come to this place where, where all we want is just more of God. That, that God, if it's just, just more of you. Just more of you. And, and I know it, it seems basic. Uh, it seems elementary. And, and for example, uh, if, if you've lost a job, you're going, uh, Ron, uh, God, God's good, uh, but I really need a job. And, and honestly, I, I, just, I, just want, I just want to say to you, no, you need to get back with God. There's something about God that changes every aspect of our life. 
There's something about being with our Heavenly Father that changes all perspective that we have. And, and my heart and prayer for you as we walk through this series is that we will all come to this place that, that we will see and experience and value once again the greatness of who our God is. And so we're, we're going to start this morning uh, the, the sermon, and, and we're just going to start with a word of prayer. And this is what I'm going to do. We're, we're going to pray. I, I'm just going to leave it quiet for a while. All right? Many of you, you, you've come in from different aspects. You've got different stuff going on. Uh, you may have had a rough night last night. Um, you know, you, you may be coming in Sunday morning, and, and you're just frazzled in your mind. And uh, as we open up the Word, I, I just... We're just going to leave some time of quietness. Just uh, talk to God. When, when we pray, we're just talking to God. And, and just ask Him in these moments to move in your heart, to speak to you, to meet you where you're at. And, and, and even like th th that conclusion will be, God, take me to a place that I realize all I want is you. All I need is you. So let's, let's, let's pray. Lord, the reality of Christmas is that we have so little time of just quietness. Lord, I, I pray for each and every one of us, Lord, that you will bring us back to you this Christmas. Lord, that we will remember the sweet days that we had with you if we're far from you. Lord, that you will encourage us uh, Lord, that of your incredible love and your amazing grace, Lord, just draw us back. Draw us back to you. We need you. We want you. Uh, Lord, help us in all those things. Lord, as we open up your word, I just pray once again that you'll draw us back uh, to, to true life, to eternal life, to a forgiven life, which is found in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. One of the greatest gifts uh, that God gives to us is someone to follow. Uh, God doesn't mess around when it comes to following. He says, follow me. And one of the treasures that, that we see in a relationship with God is that he is someone to follow. Right? I mean, I mean think about all the ways that we follow people in life. Uh, think, think about that, have you ever noticed this? When you follow somebody, right and wrong becomes vague. Have you ever noticed this? Right, you're driving down the street. You're driving on the highway. 55 mile per hour speed zone. You know the right thing. What's the right thing? 55 miles per hour. Right? That's the right thing. And you see all these cars. Phew! Phew, phew, and what do you do? Uh, maybe it's not 55. Maybe it's kind of the way the other cars are going. So we end up going 65, 70. If you're on a vacation, now I don't do this, of course, but if, if you're on a vacation and you're headed somewhere like 8 to 10 to 15 hours away, and the car starts, there's a car that goes 85, 90. You know, the, the tendency for, for you is, is to get behind this car, to follow them, because you think what? <laughs> well, <laughs> they're going to get busted before I am, right? I mean, come on, all of us admit it, right? It's true, someone to follow, right? When we follow someone, you know, there's vagueness when it comes to, to right and wrong, right? We, 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 got, we got to realize that. When it, when it comes to following people, I, I've also noticed this with, with people. Um, when, when, it, when you follow people, they give you direction. You end up in places that, that you, you, you may not have thought you would end up. You, you know? 
uh, it was so interesting. Uh, Michelle and I ran the marathon, and we went to this marathon expo, and, uh, which is like where all the marathon runners would go to pick up like your bibs and your tags and all this kind of stuff. And we, had, we, we, we didn't really know where the expo was. We knew where to park, and, but then we kind of went in this elevator, and no one else was in this elevator, and you're like, wow, oh, expo, 35, 40,000 people, right? You, you, what, what are you looking for? Just give me someone to follow, right? So we get out of this elevator. Three or four people are going this way. 15 to 20 are going this way. Where do you think we went? 15 to 20 people, absolutely, right? Why? Well, that's, that seems the right way to go because there's more people going in that direction. So we're going to follow we're going to follow them, right? And then you end up in these places that you may not, may not like, but sometimes it's a good thing. I was on my way to a Cubs game one time, and uh, we were driving down some street. I always get lost in Chicago all the time. Driving down the street, and uh, my friend was driving. He's like, we're, we're going to Wrigley Field. And I'm like, are you sure we're going to Wrigley Field? He's like, yeah, we're headed in the right direction. And I was just kind of like, I, I kept seeing these Cubs shirts going the other way. I mean, they're all walking the other way. And I'm going... Are you sure we're going the right way? Because everybody else is going that way. And sure enough, we were going the wrong way. And so we turned around, right? Who we follow leads us even, even directionally. And, uh, and, and Jesus takes us even, even further. I, I need two volunteers. I, I need two volunteers. Anybody? Two, two volunteers? Uh, we, we, we need to do this fast. All right. Come on up. You got it, dude. Come on up. Who, who's coming? All right. Dan's, oh, we got two people in the back. Here you go, Dan and Nick. Come on. All right. So, Dan, do you know Nick at all? Nick, do you know Dan? Okay. Okay, you know him now. It's good. That's good. That's good. You know, G- Jesus takes this a, a, step, a step further. In, in Matthew 15, 14, uh, Jesus says this ab- about following. He says, if a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. All right? So, uh, who, who you follow is pretty important. Right, so you guys know each other, way back, way back, way back when, and, and you guys you enjoy each other, yeah, you, you trust each other, absolutely, you, you, tr- you, you trust Dan, okay, sweet, I'm glad you trust Dan, so, so we'll, we'll have you close your eyes, you, you, can't, you can't watch, and, and Dan, you're going to close your eyes as well, okay. and, and what I want you to do is, is just make sure you don't fall into, into that pit, all right, so close your eyes, close your eyes, and, and, and we, we, we're, what? And I have to kind of confuse you a little, a little bit, maybe. And and okay, so 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 lead him, Dan. Lead lead him. You can to where? Lead him. Lead lead him to uh, the candles. Okay. Lead him to the candles. <laughs> All right, good job, good job, good job, good job. All right, he's way too talented. He knew where the candles were despite, right? But a blind man leads a blind man can lead you into a pit. All right? So who we follow is significant. Who are you following? Who do you follow? It's, it's why one of the greatest gifts that God gives to us is somebody who leads us. Jesus says, follow me. Jesus says, follow me. I will lead you into eternal life. I'll give you abundant life. I will lead you. And, and, and we just, we just have, to, have to admit this, that the reality is in life, all of us come to this point where, where, where we get desperate for someone to lead. Have you ever been there? God, just tell me where to go. I'll do anything you want. Just lead me, right? Just take me, right? And imagine if, if you don't have God in your life, you, you, you can't say that. All you say is what? I don't know where to go. Just try to make the best decision. One of the greatest gifts that God gives to us is he says, follow me. And so this morning, we're going to look at a text this morning where Matthew chooses to follow uh, Jesus. So open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 9. (coughs) 
Matthew chapter 9, verse 9, says this. It, it's so cool when you, when you think about this text because uh, the writer of this, I mean the author, the, the one that God said write this down, Matthew is now talking about his own story. It's just cool to think about that. So this is, this is what happened in Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Now, you, you, you got you to kind of picture this a little bit in, in your minds. A tax collector was someone who was not, not liked in Jesus' time, all right? They, they were, um, they, in some ways, they were kind of like that customs person. Uh, they collected tax for, for the city of Rome, and therefore they were kind of like the enemy, right? If, if you were a Jew, you, you're going, what are you doing collecting taxes and the problem with tax collectors is they had a tendency to raise the tax, right? There, there wasn't like any legislation for tax collectors. Tax collectors could kind of name the price. Have you noticed, if you drive down 355 and 294, that something's happening to the toll booths starting January 1? Guess what's happening? Yeah, from 40 cents to 75 cents, 50 cents to 95 cents. And if you don't have the iPass, it's worse, Right? So they're just raising the prices. How do you feel about that? Kind of maddening. Now imagine if the person at the toll booth was the one who dictated the prices and the money that you gave to them went to their pocket and their home was bigger than your home. Would you be frustrated? Yes. Matthew. Matthew. That's Matthew. Matthew's a tax collector. All right. He's sitting alongside a road. He's collecting taxes as people go from city to city. He was not enjoyed, especially by, by most Jews, although he certainly had his friends. And then Jesus comes along and meets Matthew. And Jesus says this to Matthew. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. Now imagine the disciples. Most likely, we, we don't know for sure, but most likely these guys had to pay Matthew taxes at some point. There was like a custom exchange. And, 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 and these disciples, Matthew's one of the last disciples to be called, so Jesus has these disciples that have, that have been with him, following him, and, and all of a sudden Jesus is like, you, follow me. What are the disciples thinking? And the disciples are like, yo, why would you call him? He's a shrewd businessman. He makes a lot of money. He's, he's not patriotic. He's not the guy. And yet I love this about Jesus. That Jesus calls this guy out. It, it shows you the heart of God. I mean, it really does. Because it, it, it shows us that <laughs> that, that as Jesus looked for his followers, he didn't choose just based upon their occupation. He, he, he chose people that were unlikely. He chose an outcast. He chose someone that, that they were called sinners, tax collectors, and prostitutes. One from that gang. And, and Jesus goes, yeah, you, follow me. See, you, you may be here this morning, and you may be like, man, there is no way I can follow Jesus because of my past. There is no way that Jesus would want me to be with him in his kingdom because look at what I've done. Jesus is calling you. And in fact, you may be a, you know, a follower of Jesus, and, and you may be thinking, man, we're, we're far apart, God. It's been a long time. I've got all this stuff that, that I've wedged up between me and between you, and, and, and we're far apart, and you're going, do I even have a chance? Will, 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 will God forgive me? He's calling you. He says, follow me. Follow me. And look at Matthew's response. Matthew got up 
and followed him. Just got up and followed him. I've been thinking all week, what did, what did Jesus offer Matthew that, that would have Matthew just get up and leave everything? Because the reality is when you look at Matthew's life, he's okay. Yes, he's hated, but he also has a lot of friends. And we see that in verse 10. If you look at verse 10, right, he follows Jesus and he brings all of his friends who are tax collectors and, and all these sinners, right, he brings all of them into his house. He, he has this huge banquet. So he's got people around him. He's got people that like him. He's got friends. And the guy's got money. He's got money. I mean, if, if we looked at him in our present day, it's, it's, it's your typical average businessman who honestly is a good businessman and makes some good money because he knows how to be shrewd. And, and yet, this, this guy, Matthew, he, he, he sees Jesus, and Jesus calls him out, and, and he leaves everything and follows him. Wh why? And, and we, we don't exactly know. What, what we do know is that th there's no question that, that, that Levi, that Matthew had heard at least a little bit about Jesus, all right? If, if you look at chapter 9, uh, verse 1, if you have your Bibles, it says, Jesus stepped, stepped into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town, which is Capernaum, which is where Matthew is, all right? So if it's your own town, you spent some time in that town, all right? So most likely Matthew, Matthew's, Matthew's heard about Jesus, uh, it, it, even earlier that day, Jesus had healed, healed a paralytic. We don't know if, if Matthew had, had been a part of that or not, or had seen that or heard about that. But, but I think we can say that, that Matthew had, has heard about, about Jesus, and yet he's willing to leave all of these things and, and, follow, and follow Jesus. And, and do, do you see what Jesus did not offer Matthew? I mean, Jesus doesn't say, hey, Matthew, I got a deal for you. If you follow me, if you follow me, life's going to be set for you. He, he doesn't say, hey, Matthew, if you follow me, the relationship stuff you got going on, no problem. He, he doesn't say, hey, you know, the, the, the job that you're going to lose right now by following me, um, I, it's all right, I'll give you money. What Jesus offers is himself. Jesus says, follow me. Follow me. And Matthew has the guts to say, Jesus, this life, this life that I'm living is not doing it for me. The money that I make doesn't fill the hole in my heart. The friends that I have are not meeting the needs that I need. And you got it. Do you realize that every single person has this this need, this deep desire to be filled, and the only one who can fill that is God. And, and the reality is, whether or not we know Jesus, whether or not we're a follower of Jesus, or we've walked away, the only way that that, that deepest need within you can be filled is Jesus Christ himself. And the further away you get from Jesus, the further away that you try to run away, the further away that you try to get away, you're going to miss out on the greatest gift, which is Jesus himself. Jesus offers up himself. Last night, 
I was at a wedding, and um, after the wedding, we had uh, there were these cards on on the table, and uh, and they were called table topics, and. Uh, Every, each one of us had these little table topics underneath our, our plate. And I sat down at, at a random place and uh, I looked at my question. And uh, the, the question uh, was, um, what is your personal hell? Sorry if I offended you, that was just the question. And I thought, wow, what a great question for a pastor. <laughs> you know, I was like, wow, this is great. And um, I thought a lot about that question, just, just through the night and then driving home, and, and this, is, this is what I came to, one day without God. One day without God. Can the worship team come up? I, I don't know where you guys are at. But I, I just want to. I just want to testify. I just want to proclaim to you that Jesus Christ is the only one who can fill the need, who can fill that that desire for wanting more. He is the only one who can meet your deepest need and desire. And I know. I know life. I I, I live it. And and we try to put everything else in the place of Jesus. We, 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 try, we try to put all these different things, and, and even in Christmas, we, we try to cover up broken relationships. We, we try to pre, you know, prepare with, with gifts to give and, and with you know, meals that we kind of sit down at and, and kind of have these fake, you know, unreal conversations kind of stuff, possibly with friends and family, and, and we're longing for something more. Who is going to fill that need for you is Jesus Christ himself and no one else. So where are you at? Where are you at? Maybe this morning um, you, you don't have a relationship with, with God and, and you are far from him. I, I just want to encourage you. This is what I know about you. Um, and I know this because God knows this about you. What I know about you is that you have a longing that needs to be filled. And you are trying to fill it with everything but God. And if you don't know Jesus, I just want to say to you, the only one who will fill that need is Jesus Christ himself. And you can try to ignore that you have this need. You can try to ignore that you have this want. But I know, I've talked with enough people who don't know Jesus, that you have that need and only God can fill it. And then I also know that that most of us in this place, we're followers of Jesus, and, and, and we're trying to do everything in the world to get by in this life. We're trying to, we're, we're trying to fill up different needs and, and wants in, in, in different ways. And I just encourage you this morning, let's start off the Christmas season the right way by getting back to the most precious gift that you have, and that is Jesus Christ himself. And he says to you this morning, follow me. Follow me. Do the next right thing that God desires for you. Do it. Follow him. He's given himself so that you could have life. Follow him. Let's pray. Lord God, I... I just pray, Lord, in this moment, for this moment, I pray, Lord, that you will meet us in this place. Lord God, I, I just, I pray for those uh, who are broken. I, I pray for those uh, who have, who, who come in here this morning and they're hopeless. Uh, Lord, I, I pray for those that have tried to Fill that need, fill that hole with, with everything but you. Lord God, I just pray that you will bring us closer to you. 
Lord, I pray in this moment that, that we'll remember what this season is truly all about. Lord, I, I pray that you will draw us to yourself in your amazing grace so that we can truly celebrate Christmas this year. That we won't try to cover all up with the gifts that we give, but we will celebrate you. And we will worship you. And Lord, that we'll, we'll bring you back into our homes to be the heart of what Christmas is all about. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I just want to say this to you. Um, you. You may have a ton of gifts around the Christmas tree this year, and you may have very little. But I just want to say to you that if Jesus Christ is at the heart of your home, it's not going to matter. That's how good Jesus is. Cherish him. Because our God is like no other God. He has said that he is with us. And he is with us. Nothing can stand against us. Nothing can stand against us. Let's sing. Let's stand and sing. Closing song of our God.